this time I'm not at the uh, penthouse lounge. I'm in my backyard because I'm waiting on a delivery, a special delivery today. So I had to stick around and make sure I was home for that. But I want to talk to you about just a mindset that you need to be a real estate investor. Now there's a couple of things that you really need to practice as a real estate investor, but today it's going to be discipline. The reason I say you must be disciplined is because you don't have a boss telling you what time to be at work and what tasks you need to accomplish each day. You don't have an alarm clock or you don't really need to use one as a real estate investor. You can get up when you want and lally gag around all day if that is what you want to do. But there's still plenty of action items that you need to be able to be a successful real estate investor. So you got to be disciplined. You have to set standards for yourself and realize that you're in business for yourself and make sure that you're disciplined every single day in the practice and your uh, everyday routines. If you fall into lazy habits and doing things that aren't productive and aren't going to make you money, then that's what will happen. Uh, you have to be pig-headed, determined, and disciplined in this business. And really it applies to your life in general. So if you don't practice those three things, being pig-headed, disciplined, and determined in every single thing that you do, then change the way you think and you might start seeing some different results. For example, um, one way I, I practice being pig-headed, disciplined, and determined, other than that's kind of like uh, how I am naturally, pig-headed, is uh, at CrossFit. It's a, a fitness program that I'm in that's very tough and challenging, intense, and uh, one of the movements we do are handstand push-ups and that's just what you think it is. It's doing a handstand with your feet in the air up against the wall and then doing push-ups. And if you can't do those, then you have to start on a big uh, giant rubber band, so to speak, uh, that kind of uh, lessens the resistance and helps you do them with, you know, without killing yourself or if you're not strong enough. Or, But anyway, the point is I'm pig-headed and determined and disciplined, so after just a couple of months of telling myself, I'm going to do these without the band, uh, you know, last time I worked out last week, I was able to do handstand push-ups. So you got to practice those three things every, in every aspect of your life to be successful. So set some goals for yourself and be pig-headed, disciplined, and determined to get it done. Now I want to show you, um, we mailed out some yellow letters last week and of course you're going to always have returns on any direct mail campaign that you do uh, but if you don't know what a yellow letter is looks like this hopefully you can see it in the camera angle um, I can put a sample of it on the website or actually there's a link on the resource page takes you right to the guy that does yellow letters yellowlettersComplete.com um, but this is what a yellow letter looks like very simple gets very good results when you're trying to generate leads. But my point is, is that you're going to get about 10% of them come back as undeliverable. And this one, I'm just going to tell you what some ideas you can do. This one has, they come back with yellow stickers on them right here, return to senders, and it tells you the reason why it come back to you. And this one is vacant. So this just turned into a different type of lead. So uh, we were mailing to uh, code violations and uh, this one came back as vacant. So now we know that this is a vacant house, which makes this person even more motivated to sell. And what we have to do now is hire a skip tracer to find uh, Daniel Storch. So Daniel Storch, if you're watching the show by any chance, learn how to be a mobster, contact me. Let me see this one. <laughs> this one actually blew into the pool before we started. Uh, this one's even better. This one came back to us with a forwarding address. Okay, maybe you can, uh, I'll put it, I'll sh scan this so you can see it. It's kind of runny, but it gave us a new address of where to send this letter to uh, Charles Blodgett. So it came back, but now we know where Charles lives, and 
chances are very high that he does not live in this house anymore that he once owned. So we're going to send another letter to Charles at this new address. So you should do the same thing with your yellow letters that are returned. Don't throw them away. Use them. Okay, questions for this week. What is it? We got four minutes. Actually, YouTube has gone to 15 minutes, so I can go a little bit, a little bit longer. All right. First question is from John. John actually sent me this um, on one of my hub pages, but I'm going to use it for the show. It says, I'm trying to learn from the best. I was wondering where you learned how to wholesale. Also, I was wondering, what do you suggest for someone that is wanting to learn all aspects of wholesaling? Uh, I began learning about short sales and was wondering if you have any suggestions for a beginner. So actually I learned from another wholesaler that um, we kind of tagged off of, Dan and I, bootlegged off of him. He showed us the ropes. Without him, I don't know if we'd have ever got the full grasp of it or had known which direction we wanted to take. But if you can find a mentor or a coach who can show you how to get there, then that's the best way to learn real estate. You can get information overload at seminars and uh, books and manuals, but you know if you have a person that's been there and done that and can show you how to do it, that's definitely the, the best way to do it. And they hold you accountable and make sure you're doing the right thing. Uh, this one's from Sean Anderson. He's in Arizona. He says, what about the houses that I find that are not in too bad a shape that are vacant? How should I handle those? Do I still use the Mayo formula even if they need only cosmetic repairs? See you in the lounge. Yes, you will always use the Mayo formula, Sean, no matter what. So I've never seen, you know, we've done about 300 houses wholesale. Never seen anyone, I'll take that back, maybe 5% don't need any repairs at all. So there's always going to be uh, a, a factor. I mean, you wouldn't be buying it wholesale if it didn't need repairs, right? They'd probably put it on the market and sell it traditional, you know, using a realtor or selling it for market value. Uh, so there's always going to be something, most of the time, where in your Mayo calculation you're going to count for repairs. Even if it is just paint and carpet, you know, five grand, you're going to do some sprucing up, lawn, uh, lawn landscaping, whatever it's called, and uh, make the house look better so that you can sell it. Or, or at least, you know, that, that's what you use to calculate Mayo is repairs. So. Um, always at least use $5,000 even if it is looks good to you. Uh, there's always something you can do. Paint and carpet makes a house look amazing. So yeah. Okay, questions from Robert in Florida. His question is about the 90-day seasoning after a person buys the property to rehab and resell. Uh, he understands that FHA no longer requires 90 days and he wants to know if that's true. Uh, now this is actually pertaining to short sales is what he's referring to or he's talking about if you purchase a property wholesale and then you want to rehab it and resell it to an FHA buyer. And there was a 90 day title seasoning requirement but as of February the 1st 2010 they have changed that rule with a few stipulations and uh, I'm going to go over them real quick. There's only five. Uh, the 90 day seasoning rule has been waived for one year and that started February 1st 2010. There can't be any previous flipping activity on this property within the last 12 months. So uh, that is number two. The property has to be marketed open and fairly in the MLS or by FISBO. Uh, so they have to see that the property was actively in, uh, marketed. If the increase in price, meaning when you resell the property for a profit, is more than 20% of the purchase price, then a second appraisal is required for the loan uh, and to, to justify the increase in value. So they, they, the appraiser may even want to see um, repair receipts and things like that. And number five, all transactions must be at arm's length. That means you can't sell it to a brother, sister, family member, lineal descendant, things like that. So it has to be sold to someone that is uh, not related to you. Uh, so that is the deal with a 90-day FHA title seasoning requirements uh, when selling to an FHA buyer. Whew, it's hot out here. Um, that's it for today. 
You can go to the website at propertymob.com and click on Ask Me a Question. When you ask me a question this week, you're going to get um, a special report called The Seven Deadly Sins of Wholesaling Real Estate. So get your question in so you can get that free report. It's awesome. It's all the things that you need to know, what you don't want to do when you're wholesaling real estate. Tracy K. would checking out. Until next week, I'll see you in the lawn, lounge. PropertyMob.com. See ya.